Hi everyone, my name is teacher Ilona Smith. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, grade 10s, this is for you. We're looking at the concept of quality. Let's kick it. All right, concept of quality, let's go. Now, just remember, grade 10s, you are in grade 10, yes, but this is a topic that gets done in grade 10, 11, and grade 12. So, to make your life easier, pay attention now, listen to this, and understand this topic, because it's just going to build in grade 10 and build in grade 11, and it's a very, very important topic in grade 12, and it's quite a big topic as well, and they love to ask this. So, pay attention, keep those ears open. So we're going to be looking at the meaning of quality, quality control, and quality assurance. We're looking at the indicators of quality. So in a previous video of mine and in one of the previous chapters, you went through the eight business functions. We're going to look in quality for each of them. Here is the book that I've made use of for the content in these slides and in this video today. Please note that I don't take any credit for this information as I have adapted it from the textbook and I haven't changed the words at all for the purpose that business studies needs to be written word for word and I feel changing the wording will change the context. With that being said, this is a textbook from the Department of Education. You can download it for free from the Western Cape Department of Education website. I'll make sure to put that resource down below and also you can find it at the resources at the end of my video. So let's go. Introduction. Quality is critical to satisfying customers and retaining their loyalty to ensure that they contribute to buying in the future. Quality products make an important contribution to long-term revenue and profitability. The quality indicators in a business function work together to contribute to the quality of the final product. So now if we just brainstorm and think over quality for a second, we can think, you know, when we buy Nike shoes, whether I'm buying it today, three months time or a year's time, I expect the quality to be the same. Also, if my friend goes to go buy the latest Nike shoes and I go buy the latest Nike shoes, they should be of the same quality. And this is what's important for a business to uphold and to keep those standards. Because if it's going to be different, then why am I going to buy it from them? Because today it looks like this and tomorrow it looks like something completely different. One big challenge for businesses though is the food and the consumption industry. Because if you're making food, like let, let, let's take a simple example, Doritos chips. No matter when I buy Doritos chips, they always taste the same. Am I correct? That's what businesses need to uphold. That's what they need to keep up to date with. And I must say, for the food industry, it is very difficult because one slight ingredient can change it quite drastically. So, now we're looking at the meaning of quality, quality control, and quality assurance. If I were you, I'd NB this section. They asked this in grade 12 too. The difference specifically between quality control and quality assurance. There's a slight difference, but it does confuse students a lot. So I would definitely write NB for this one because they like to ask to differentiate between the two. So starting off the meaning of quality. Quality refers to goods and services that satisfy customers' needs and expectations continuously. It refers to the characteristics of a product or service that meets the customer's requirements. Quality guarantees the degree of excellence to which a product or service meets the required needs of customers. So now we're looking at the meaning of quality control. Quality control involves the inspection of the important final product. Highlight that. To ensure that it meets the required standards. It includes setting targets, measuring performance, and taking corrective measures. Raw materials, employees, machinery, workmanship, production are checked to ensure that this high quality is maintained throughout. So, main, main important thing here is we're checking what did it say? Inspection of the final product. 
So we have a shoe that's being created, it's being sprayed, it's being checked, all the things are being done. We only do inspection and we control the quality when at the end. So we don't check it throughout. We only check the final product. That is the important key here to remember with quality control. I'm going to come back to it when we do quality assurance. So we're only checking the final products. We're making Dorito chips. They're on the line and they're going. And now they're finished. Now we check them. Now we do inspection at the end of the whole process. So here's a little diagram of the quality control. So it's a process. We check, we guarantee that quality is, you know, at the standard should be. Customers can also check and we check the level of satisfaction. That's often when you see that um, they talk about batch testing. So if it's foods, they've, they've tested the batch. That's what it's referring to. They do batch testing. And that's why if there's a problem with uh, one of your products. So I bought milk. It, it's now years ago, about six years ago. I bought milk that was, oof, it looked like cottage cheese. It was off. And the thing is, I bought it and it was three months later that the milk, um, that when I bought the milk. And it was supposed to last for another year or two. By three months, it had already expired. And I mean, that's not great. Anyway, moving on. When I submitted the request and asked for a refund, they asked me, what is the batch number? Why? Because they need to check if there's a problem with that batch. If that's the case, they need to recall that entire batch. That's with the batch testing. But again, when does it get done? Afterwards. Then the meaning of quality assurance. Yes, it's buddy that we like to confuse. The inspection of products and services should be carried out when, during, and after. Do you see the difference? Inspection is carried out during and after. This will ensure that the required standard that were set out for the product has been adhered to at every stage of the process. So at every stage during it gets tested and inspected. It also ensures that every process is aimed at getting the product and service right the first time. And this enables them to prevent state mistakes from happening. So quality control, we are only going to control it at the end. Assurance, we are assuring through every single process that we are doing the inspection. So quality control only at the end. Quality assurance during do, 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 every stage and at the end of the product too. There's a little diagram. Um, just that it's nice put in a table with the two differences. Again, this is a nice one that they like to ask. So pause the video, go through this, but it's basically a repeat of what we just did. The differences between quality control and quality assurance. Now we're looking at the importance of quality for the business. The quality enables businesses to have a good reputation and promotes brand awareness. Like I said, if my friend's going to buy a pair of Nike shoes, I go and buy the same pair of Nike shoes, the quality should be at the same level. Customers associate the image of a business with the quality of the product. Quality products increase sales, profits, business growth and attracts prospective investors. The business gains goodwill and support from the community. Quality and products. Now the methods used in order to indicate the quality. So trademarks, brand names, slogans, logos that are used, they need to all look the same, right? Samples. Um, you can also give out samples. So giving out a sample will... Uh, it's intended to show the customer how the real product will look or how the real product works. Um, they do this a lot for perfume where they give out little testers and samples. Also for a lot of your meat uh, manufacturers, they will actually be in your grocery stores. And I know I've seen it before with like boudoirs or pork sausages. They actually cook up some pork sausages and let you taste them. So you know what does this meat taste like once I've cooked it when I've bought it. So those are seen as your samples. 
grades a particular level that is used to rank the quality of a product. So this often happens with fruits, vegetables and meat as well. So if you buy apples and it's grade A apples, then it's one of the best. So they rate them on the A, B and C levels and that way you can see where's the quality sitting. And then the commercial standards. So SABS, which is the South African Bureau of Standards, will approve commercial products um, and the standards of these products. So if you look on the back of, I know, chip packets, they have that little logo of SABS, S-A-B-S, SABS, which means it has been stamped, it's been approved that it meets the quality standards. Quality indicators of the eight business functions. So in the next slides, we're gonna look at what are the quality indicators? How can I indicate quality at all these different functions? So we're looking at human resources first. The recruitment policy should attract the best candidates for the available post within the business. HR should follow a fair and equitable selection process. A low rate of staff turnover in a business. A healthy relationship between employees and employers should be maintained. Market-related salaries should be offered. Fair remuneration packages that are aligned to the industry should be provided. Performance incentives for staff should be offered to increase productivity. And the HR managers should work together in building relationships with their employees. Ensure that employees understand the goals and objectives of the business and then understand the interrelatedness of the different departments. So this is how we can indicate and show quality. Obviously, coming back to the first point, if we are attracting the best candidates and we're hiring these best candidates with the suitable package and a package that is industry related, then it can increase our productivity. It can also increase the quality of our products because the correct people, the right people are making these products and they will ensure quality. Then the administration function, admin. The administration function should collect data that can be used for decision-making and it should be stored safely. All documentation should be kept neatly and orderly in a safe place. So documentation like this, data, um, Perhaps a company does a survey where they ask their customers if they are happy with their products and if they have any suggestions. All of this data should be collected and then this can be used for decision making. Perhaps the customers show us and indicate to us that there are problems within the products that we're creating and they give suggestions. We can look at these and then make decisions on them. It's the admin function's responsibility to collect this data and to store it properly. All documentation should be kept neatly and in an orderly safe place. Financial documents should be kept up to date and recorded accurately. Vital information should be available to management when needed. This relevant information should be available to make a quick decision. All systems and processes should be documented. This is a vital part of the administration function. The latest technology should be used. Complaints should be handled quickly and effectively. The financial function must obtain the capital from the suitable sources. They should negotiate better and lower interest rates to keep financial costs as low as possible. They should draw a budget to ensure the sufficient allocation of cash to prevent wastage. The financial record should be kept up to date at all times and should be accurate according to the order for the business to be tax compliant. Accurate financial statements should be drawn up so that the management can see the performance of the business. And then surplus funds, so additional extra funds, should be used to invest to save for future product projects, expansion or growth. General management function. Okay, I'm not explaining too much additional on these because these ones are just factual and these are just the indicators in which um, we can ensure quality. So the general management function should develop and monitor effective strategic plans. So they should do the following. Continuously learn and understand changes in the business environment. Take responsibility for setting direction and prioritizing responsibilities. 
communicate and share vision and values effectively. Sets an example of the expected behavior in terms of ethics and professionalism. And ensure that employees have the necessary resource in order to do their work and allocate these resources effectively. Then we're looking at the production function. The calculation of production costs should be accurate and should ensure accurate pricing. Accreditation from SABs should be sourced to ensure that the quality products are being produced. Machines and equipment should be used optimally. The correct production system, so for example, if we're looking at mass, batch, or jobbing, jobbing should be chosen. Okay, so like batch making of products. The production and services should be produced at the lowest possible cost to maximize profit, but again, not compromising on quality. Employees should be empowered so that they can take pride in their workmanship. Production problems should be identified by closely monitoring systems and processes. Quality control systems should be implemented to consistently produce a quality product. The marketing function. The marketing function should differentiate products to attract more customers by giving real value to the product on offer. Market share should inc be increased by satisfying customers' needs and wants. Effective communication with customers should be fostered to give feedback with regards to products and services. Values in which businesses operate should be constantly reviewed. Effective pricing techniques and strategies should be used to ensure that the company gets a competitive advantage over its competitors. Aggressive advertising campaigns should be used to sustain the market share. Public Relations, PR. The Public Relations Officer should deal quickly with negative publicity. They should provide regular, positive press release. Sustainable Corporate Social Investment, CSI projects should be implemented. Positive feedback from public surveys regarding the business should be implemented and maintained. A high standard of internal publicity, appearance of the buildings, professional telephone etiquette, and so on, this should be maintained. Quality goods and services that promote the brand and image with stakeholders, customers, suppliers, government, and service providers should be provided. Then the purchasing function. Now, before I go to the purchasing function, just bear in mind, this is a very nice question to ask. They can ask, um, so there's eight business functions. Name and explain four of the business, um, name and explain four quality indicators of the business functions. And this is a very nice essay question. Um, if it were me setting the paper, I would set this as an essay question. There's just a lot of content and there's a lot that students can expand on. So I would ensure to learn at least four bullets under each of these headings to make sure that I get all those marks. But this could be a very, very nice question for an exam. So I would just envy this with the eight business functions. The purchasing manager should buy raw material in bulk and negotiate for discounts to reduce the production cost. They should choose reliable suppliers who render quality goods at a reasonable price. They must place orders timelessly and conduct regular follow-ups to ensure that goods are delivered on time. Order quantities should be delivered at the right time and place. Good stock control measures should be implemented and securing stock against theft should be prioritized. Average stock levels should be maintained to avoid overstocking, running out of stock. Ensure that there is no break in production due to stock shortages. All right, now we're looking at the correlation between management and the success of the business in achieving its objectives, strengths and weaknesses. Management plays an important role in making the correct decisions and motivating employees to be productive. Poor management can result in ineffective employees and loss of productivity. 
Businesses require ongoing decision making and problem solving. Problems that cannot be solved and decisions that are not made appropriately can lead to a decrease in production. All right, we've reached the end of the video. Here is a mind map recap on this chapter. It's just a nice little um, snapshot of all the different areas that we've looked at with this chapter. So you're more than welcome to jot this down if you feel to do so. Here are the resources I mentioned that I've made use of for this video. The one I've made use of the most is a resource at the bottom, which is the DBE textbook, the one I showed in the beginning, um, that I've made use of for the content and the slides in the video for today. You are welcome to go access these. Again, I've put them in my description below. It's very nice. The textbook's awesome. It's got lots of revision exercises, um, practice questions, even practice exams and tests. So I would definitely encourage you to go check it out. I would just like to thank you so, so very much for watching my video today. Thank you, Great Tens, for the support that you've shown me. I hope that you're enjoying business studies. You know, it's a new one for you guys. Um, coming from EMS that had accounting business and economics, seeing business studies on its own now, it is very different. And I hope you guys are enjoying it, having a blast. Let me know what you're struggling with, what you're excited about, what you're enjoying and loving about the subject. because. As you've seen in my video so far, I'm very passionate about business studies. It is my favorite subject, has been since high school, and I just love it. I love teaching it, I love talking about it, and I love sharing my knowledge and passing it on to you guys as well. I hope this video was insightful and I hope it helped. If so, please give me a thumbs up and a like. Please do, as I mentioned, comment down below. And if this is very helpful for you and you've gotten value from it, please do consider subscribing to my channel. I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye for now.